Happy Tuesday, what culture, and welcome to the only damn raw review show that matters. That's right, it's Ups and Downs with me, Simon Miller. And of course, what do we do on this show? We go through raw and we give the good bits an up and we give the bad bits a down. Or we point up for up or we point down for down. Didn't need, you know, me to define that for you, but I did it anyway because I'm just that kind of a guy. And we are in quite an interesting time for WWE because we're in that post-WrestleMania lull when sometimes storylines just go flying through the floor and nobody cares. However, was this a good episode of Raw? Was it a bad episode of Raw? There's only one way to find out. Let's up those downs. Now the very first thing we were told on Raw this week was that yes, at the Money in the Bank pay-per-view, we are going to get Ronda Rousey versus Nia Jax for the women's title. Do you remember when we used to tell stories, don't tell stories anymore, down? Now, it's not the worst thing in the world. And sure, if you want to put the damn title on Ronda Rousey, that ain't the worst idea in the world. She's a proper star. She's a celebrity. And you'll get all that mainstream coverage that you so desire. But we couldn't have built to this. We couldn't have inserted some story into it. Also, what's the deal with Ronda Rousey and Natty that I've been investing in over the last few weeks? Just dead. Strange this, especially as it was announced on social media first as if it was just some random Raw match. I don't get it, but we'll see what happens. And then Raw started properly, and given that we were in London this week, all the audience and all the fans were nuts. I love that. Get it up. Roman Reigns came out to booze, because of course it's 2018, and Roman Reigns was in an arena somewhere in the world, and he was mad because now not only is WWE management screwing him, but also he feels like Jinder Mahal is screwing him as well. I hate all this stuff with WWE management, but whatever. He called Jinder Mahal out, but instead he got Kurt Angle. He told Roman Reigns that he's not going to have another chance at the money in the bank, but Jinder more Hall is because later on he's going to be in a triple threat match with Elias and Bobby Lashley and then he also said look man I understand where you're coming from I understand that you're mad but this is because of WWE management and again who the hell is WWE management this made Roman mad because of course it did and he took out his frustrations by going backstage finding Jinder and beating the crap out of him there's also one funny bit where Jinder threw Sano Singh into Roman Reigns I quite enjoyed that and eventually they came back out onto the ramp Superman punch crowd booed, and that was that. It was an explosive start to this episode though, so yeah, like I said, I quite enjoyed it. As for this program, I don't know, you tell me in the comments below. Then we had Seth Rollins versus Kevin Owens because the latter had indeed accepted the former's Intercontinental Open Challenge, and I tell you, this was absolutely fantastic as get it up. Just an amazing, amazing match as two great wrestlers had a great wrestling bout. There was back and forth action, they reversed a load of stuff, they got all their moves in, and eventually, slam! Seth Rollins smashed Kevin Owens with the curb stop. One, two, three. He retains the IC Championship. There's nothing else I can say about it. It's one of those moments where you just have to, you know, take yourself out of whatever you're doing and go and watch this because you owe it to yourself. It is wonderful. Then we had some weird footage from the Radio City Hall event, which is where, yes, Ronda Rousey did indeed get challenged for this women's title match by Nia Jax. And this had all the seriousness and believability of a dead fish. It was like mates talking about their backstage promotion before they all go off to eat some pizza to book the damn thing. It's ridiculous. It's getting it down. Curtis Axel and Bo Dallas were up next, and my word, they've become amazing from nowhere. I loved it. Getting up. For one, they told Kurt Angle that they had come up with a new name, and indeed that new name was the A-Team. When Angle reminded them, can't be called that, it's already taken, Bo Dallas said, okay, we'll be the B-Team, and the B stands for best. Just yes. As a new team, they told the GM that technically they're undefeated and therefore deserved a match later to prove they were up for a challenge at the tag team titles. And I tell you, all of this has legs. I thought it was just fantastic. And I'm excited to see where it goes. Look at that. Within like one week or maybe two weeks, I like what they did last week as well. Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel, you're right on my radar. And I love you now. Bobby Roode then defeated No Way Jose and Baron Corbin in a triple threat match to qualify for the Money in the Bank. It was all right. It's fine. Uh, a huge down, though, for all that nonsense I had to watch between him and Elias. What was that about? We had a two-week feud where one week Elias won after trying to kill Bobby Roode. Then, you know, Bobby Roode won. And that's that. We're done. Why did I even bother to open my eyes? Up next, we had a couple of backstage segments, one of which was Kevin Owens being mad that he had indeed lost against Seth Rollins. Another one, when Jinder Mahal was also mad because he had been beaten up. Doesn't get up, doesn't get down. It just existed. 
These were segue segments. Then the B team beat Breezango, and I tell you, it was absolutely brilliant. What the hell is happening is getting up. For starters, Dallas and Axel came out with the B team, just scrawled across their shirts in magic marker like they'd done them themselves. And then they beat Breezango with a double net breaker and celebrated as if they'd just won the damn lot already. And they got a B team chant going. Now that's going to be harder when you're not in London, but I don't care. This is off to a rollicking good start and I'm having a great time. I'm in. I'm so damn in. Ember Moon, Natty Neidhart and Sasha Banks then beat the Riot Squad and all storylines that were connected to this were utterly ignored. It's getting it down. The finish was indeed Natty Neidhart making Morgan tap out with the sharpshooter, but there was no Bailey, there was no Ronda Rousey. Any connection that we had seen over the last few weeks was thrown out the window and this was just a match with no explanation. What? It's madness, this. Mad. What do they expect to happen when they actually pull the trigger of any of this? No one's going to give two craps. I don't know what to give what came next because I couldn't figure or explain any of it because we did cut backstage to a promo with Dolph Ziggler and Drew McIntyre who said they were ready for the challenge of Braun Strowman and Finn Balor who now are apparently a tag team. Why? I don't know. I mean, I really don't know. And they're having a match later. So prepare yourselves for that. And if we were going to do this, why the hell wasn't Balor at WrestleMania 34 and him teaming up with Strowman instead of some 10-year-old kid? I love you, Nicholas. I miss you. We also had the Deleter of Worlds defeating the Revival. Now, that gets an up because I love Bray Wyatt and Matt Hardy together. They just make me laugh. They entertain me. They make me feel happy things in my gut. However, it's a down because at this point, the Revival are pretty much being treated like jobbers. They just lost here. No story. No direction. They're just floating through the abyss like lost warriors. Sami Zayn then arrived on the scene to essentially tell us that, hey, I'm going to start feuding with Bobby Lashley now. But Sami Zayn is amazing. He did a long promo segment, which was amazing. Get up. Zayn mostly blamed Bobby Lashley for screwing up his Money in the Bank chances and not allowing him to compete at the Greatest Royal Rumble because he gave him that big suplex a few weeks ago and that caused Zayn to have vertigo, meaning his wrestling got all screwed up. He also let us know that he thinks Bobby is trying to hide something and he's going to expose him on Raw and invited his sisters to the show next week. And you remember his sisters. They're the people from that weird promo that Bobby cut last week where he told us basically how awful his childhood would. But however, he had a great time still when he was a kid. I like this though. I'm not entirely sure why. And Zayn is absolutely going to get killed by Bobby Lashley. But hey, at least they're doing something together. I'm all right with it. Then Alexa Bliss won a triple threat match against Bailey and Mickie James to qualify for her money in the bank. You know. Solid match. And I always enjoy how a European crowd reacts to Bailey. But again, we had nothing to do with Sasha Banks during this contest. We did have a little bit backstage beforehand where she wished her luck. That felt utterly redundant. It was solid though, with a couple of cool near falls, but eventually Bailey did get slammed with Alexa Bliss's DDT, and that's that. Like I say, she's heading off to the pay per view. Absolutely no idea what Bailey and Mickey James are going to get up to. They don't have any plans. Then Reigns found Mahal backstage, and he speared him through a wall. That was actually pretty cool. I enjoyed it. It's getting an up. However, it was quite clear that the wall was made out of cardboard. It also meant Mahal was out of his Money in the Bank qualifying match because of his injuries. Can you believe it? This feud would have just ramped up to the skies. Which brought us to that weird tag match that I mentioned earlier. Now, was this good? Yes, it was. I like Drew McIntyre. I think Dolph Ziggler and him make a good team. I like Braun Strowman and I like Finn Balor. But I thought Braun Strowman was meant to be the man. He's the hero. He's the king. Now we keep being thrown into random tag team matches. But yeah, it was good. So it's going to get an up and seeing big dudes like Drew and Braun go at it. It always gets me going. Sounds a bit weird, but I've said it now. There's no going back. Could have edited it out. Haven't. Let's move forward. Naturally, Drew and Dolph won after the latter had crotched Balor on the top rope. And again, I don't understand what this was. Please come and find me and let me know. Well, I did enjoy it. So I don't know. Maybe Dolph right. Main event was next. And yes, indeed, Kevin Owens replaced the injured Jinder Mahal. And he won. That surprised me. I popped, jumped off my sofa, getting up. There was nothing too surprising here other than the winner because a small part of me did believe Elias was going to win. I thought he'd take victory here, but he didn't. Instead, he got slammed by Lashley's suplex, but then Sami Zayn came out and took out Lashley. That allowed Kevin Owens to hit his big frog splash onto Elias. One, two, three. Owens going to money in the bank. And the only lasting question is what exactly happens with Elias now? He hasn't got his Bobby Roode feud anymore. Sami Zayn said going off to have his feud with Bobby Lashley. Kevin Owens qualified by in the bank. What does Elias do? He's got no one. It's like a lone soldier. Elias shouldn't be a lone soldier. He gets better each and every week. I don't know what's going to happen. However, I did think this was a very solid end to a very unexpectedly entertaining episode of Raw. And yeah, I'm quite intrigued to see what's going to happen with Money in the Bank. Don't get the Ronda Rousey thing. 
Just like we're like, meh, need something to do. Do that, take the biggest star in the world, or at least one of them, just throw her in there. But look, maybe it turns out to be the best thing ever. Maybe she wins the Women's Championship and that just blows up. I don't know, I can't predict the future. I just give ups and downs. Now don't forget to leave a comment below and let us know what you thought about last night's episode of Raw. Then like the video, share the video, make sure you subscribe to What Culture Wrestling. Then go to your browser, type in whatculture.com, read yourself some articles, you'll love it. You can waste your day and follow What Culture on Twitter at What Culture WWE. My name is Simon from What Culture. This was Ups and Downs, and remember to go outside. Don't frown, be happy, live your life, have a big heart, smile at someone randomly, see what they do, don't scare them, don't be creepy, be normal, have good times. So, thanks for watching. Please feel free to click on any of these things around my head, or something terrible might happen to the dog. Too sweet me, bro. Traitor. <laughs> Traitor. <laughs> <laughs>